Hey everyone, here's how I learned a little bit about hardware hacking while trying to fix this remote controller for my DJI Spark. What I thought was going to be a fairly harmless firmware update actually ended up being like Chernobyl for this controller. After that, even though I could turn it on and off, I couldn't pair it with my drone or the phone and I had no way of doing any kind of factory reset. Instead of shipping it back to DJI, I decided to go the DIY repair route. Once I got to the motherboard, I found an EEPROM memory chip. I had a board called the Bus Pirate laying around that I could use to reprogram these. So if I could get a clean firmware file from DJI, I could just use the Bus Pirate to pop it on there and it should just work. Well, it turns out you can't really download this from DJI, but I did find a bootleg copy on this Russian repair forum. It was kind of weird, they made you pass a test before you could download anything, and I was really hoping this isn't infected with some kind of Russian drone virus. On a side note, I think this is exactly why we need things like right to repair. There was a little bit of soldering work to hook up the chip to the bus pirate, but programming it using a tool called FlashRAM was pretty easy. I was starting to think that this might actually work. I turned it on and I could finally pair it to my drone and I could actually fly it around. But I didn't fly it around because there was one major issue and that's I had no video from the drone's camera. At this point, even though I thought this might still make for a good gift for someone who's blind, I wanted to go a step further and fix it completely. I used a tool called Binwalk, which lets you see inside firmware files. I noticed that this controller is running OpenWRT, which is a version of Linux for routers. And this kind of makes sense since the Spark uses Wi-Fi and this controller is acting as a router between the drone and your phone. In this firmware file, there were a couple partitions for storing the Linux kernel and some other memory for storing configuration and some other user settings. And when I used the hex editor to compare my backup to the Russian file, I noticed that in my backup, the two kernel sections were completely wiped out. This is like going to the dealer and getting your car back without an engine at all. But there was still some configuration data, so I thought maybe I could Frankenstein some kind of custom firmware that's half and half the salvaged backup data and the two kernels from the bootleg Russian file. This actually ended up being pretty easy to do using the standard Linux commands dd and cat to split up the files and put them back together however I liked. At this point, I was ready to try the custom firmware, but before I went through all the soldering steps again to reprogram the chip, I played around with a few other things that I would like to show you. Binwalk can show you all the files inside of this firmware, and since I'd gone this far, I wanted to see if I could find the root password for this controller. Like, like a real hacker would. In Linux, hashes of passwords are stored in etc slash shadow. And after trying to crack this hash for a little bit and doing a bit of Googling, I found that the password was big9china. Interesting. Another cool thing I found was a serial port, which let me see a bunch of cool stuff using a standard USB to serial dongle. The receive pin was actually a random unlabeled test point that took me a couple hours to find probing around with an oscilloscope and a logic analyzer, but to a true nerd, it was really worth it. I mean, look at all these beautiful boot up messages. This memory table basically confirms the partition scheme that Binwalk found earlier. So yeah, going back to that custom firmware, it ended up working perfectly. Now at this point, unfortunately, I had bought another drone, but now I have a platform that I can keep hacking on. All right, that's all. Thanks for watching.